29 year old mark of Pedro jr was among the thousands who were killed in road accidents last year in january 2020 he was crushed to death on his way from Oyarifa to accra it is a very painful loss to the family his parents cannot wipe their tears over it his mother cecilia fosuampadu cannot understand how she could lose her last born under such circumstances he doesn't sleep outside he, he has never even if he's late at times he can come home as we go for a program he come late he will come home uh, normally i've been checking on him and he said the friends are calling him mommy's son so that day sometime from some time i stopped checking on him so immediately i said no 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 if Dinia will not come and sleep, he will call or send a message. I, will, I checked my phone, there was nothing on it. In January 2020, mortuaries in and around the central region received scores of such bodies. They were involved in that Dumpuasi fatal accident, which claimed at least 34 lives. The accident happened at dawn and three vehicles were involved. Mark Miracle was one of the drivers and he admits his negligence caused that accident. 44 people were in his bus and 22 of them died. The other 12 were in the other bus. And because I'm a and I'm a member of Papa, I'm a drove National Road Safety, I'm a member of the United States. 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 I'm a member of the United Mark Miracle is 50 years. The Cape Coast High Court has jailed him five years for manslaughter. You're welcome back. So, we have told you all week, and you know Joy has been doing the drive safety campaign for a very long time. If you have followed the multimedia group, you would have realized that there's too much needless debt on our roads. And all of that, a lot of indiscipline, bad roads, people who are not qualified to be on the roads being on the roads, and just killing and maiming people and leaving families orphaned. So this morning, share your views with us. What are some of the solutions that you have in mind that you think that the nation, the leaders, can share to help this country. Now, as always, you can trust us for the best of experts to help us to deal with this subject. And joining us uh, this morning to help us do this discussion, uh, Superintendent Alexander K. Obing, and he's Director Education Research and training at the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Police. Thank you so very much. Always excited to have you on my shows. Right. Um, uh, he's not joining us alone. We have uh, other uh, guests with expertise who are going to assist us right now to look at these issues. And I am more interested in you joining and sending us messages to tell us what you think are some of the solutions that we can use. Engineer David Osafua Donting is Director Planning and Programs, the National Road Safety Authority. It used to be a commission. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for making time to join us this morning, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And joining us via Zoom is Dr. Daniel Asenso Jambibi. He's director, CSIR, 
Building and Road Research Institute. Thank you so very much for your time this morning, sir. Okay. Uh, you need to unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with uh, the Road Safety Authority. Oh. Take us back into the statistics. And I'm looking at them right here in my front. And I can't believe that this is what is happening to this country. Good morning, uh, Samson. Mm. And then good morning to all our cherished uh, viewers. Uh, once again, we are around this table. I remember a couple of uh, months ago, we sat around here and discussed the same issue. But let me say that I'm motivated by the song which was played when we all got seated. Asemi Edika. Enabeka. Enabeka. So you have set the stage right for us to talk about. Part of it is Ejumayisu Deye. Ejumayisu Deye. Enabeye. We have given that job to you yes. and the police. Yes. Mm. Now, I think that I am excited to see on the table us coming to talk about solutions, not problems. I think it is enough. Every Ghanaian here in Ghana, I think that we all know the problems. We have spoken about the problems from time immemorial. Where are the solutions? And I think I am happy that this platform has now set the stage for us to begin to talk about solutions, but not problems. What is on the table now is that in three months, January, February, March, we recorded 771 deaths. Now, if you look back, this appeared to be unprecedented compared to previous years. And this is only the numbers that have been reported okay as in to the police okay right yes 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 and indeed. I, I just mentioned that this morning seth combating who is on this beat for this documentary is right now at a facility where 54 fatalities were taken care of in that particular uh, place and he has gathered that a lot of it doesn't get reported and it's not captured in your statistics okay yeah so you are comparing to previous year okay so now, if you look at this situation, then indeed it requires that we really talk about it and do something. Hmm. Now, doing something means that all the stakeholders, Ghana in particular, and all the key players must begin to now act in a manner that we will all recognize that we are solving a problem. So, we should accept right from the beginning that we have a problem mm. now are we thinking that we got a, to know that we have a problem today in the past 20 years when we started putting together statistics we have said it severally that ghana averagely will record 2000 deaths in a year on road traffic crashes that's for just the death that's and I, I want you to remember that as you watch and listening that is just for those who die, unfortunately. But behind that, you should get to know about the figures, the statistics of those who are maimed, those who have lost their limbs, you know, breadwinners who can no longer do what they had to do. Some that have just been turned into vegetables simply because of one drunk driver or one indisciplined driver or road user. Good. So having said that, we are aware that if you, for the past 10 years, if we are even going by 2,000 deaths per year, then you are talking about 10 years times 2,000. Hmm. And that is huge. Now, that is just about statistics. We are talking about those who have been maimed, as you said, injured, to the extent that they cannot do anything. An arm is amputated, a leg is amputated, now they become a burden to society, especially families. Do we know the number of children who, as a result of road traffic crashes, have stopped going to school and they are at home, become burden for parents? 
do we know the implications on society to the extent that even if we come to national economies, 1.6% of our GDP is lost due to road traffic crashes. Now, if my mathematics will get me right, then we're talking about beyond 800 million Ghana cities a year, gone into hospital bills, gone into beds, human uh, resource, the loss in, put all together. And the pain and the agony are homes itself. Now, something, that amount you spoke about can help us effectively deal with free SHS, can help us to ensure that those two young boys who went to kill their 11 year or how many years old, you know, friend yes. for money will get education and will not be on the street or do some of these things. Fantastic. Now, if that money again is put together, it can change a whole society. It can be used for building schools, building hospitals, or even taking care of children to grow and become citizens of this country. In fact, we will not have beggars on our streets. Exactly. We will not have children hawking around the exactly. streets. At worst, it can also be used to dualize some of these uh, highways that we are talking about. So why are we losing this chunk of money when we can do something at to protect this investment? Now, it has come to a stage that if you think you have not heard the National Road Safety Authority or the police talking about road safety and the need for us to act, then the time is now. Mm. Individually, mm. we are all coming around the table with a vaccine. Because I said a vaccine because when COVID came and we all dedicated ourselves in various ways to fight it, we fought it. And now, even though it is not eradicated, we see some reduction in terms of the rate of infections. Mm. It is the same way we are advocating that let us meet this statistics squarely in any case if you compare last year which is 2589 deaths mm -hmm. added to this year we've already passed 3000 deaths in 15 months if you compare to covid covid the same period of our 15 months it's not hit even 800 mm -hmm. so which one would you want to dedicate resources energy and efforts to fight it we are not recognizing the effect of accidents because it's been there with us for a very long time. We appear to be taking that it is normal, but it is not. Okay. So, so I, it's good that we give you just a sneak peek into the statistics, but this show is dedicated to the solutions. Now, from where you sit, uh, I'll come to ask you a couple of questions. Share with us what your difficulties are in this fight because it doesn't seem that you're winning it. All right, something. Thank you very much. Um, uh, from the question, uh, we are looking at it in terms of uh, safe police can do all, but road safety in general which has to do with uh, mobility without risk of a crash, associated death or injury, is multifaceted kind of issue that confronts the world. Therefore, it has multiplicity of stakeholders. Even in the areas where we find ourselves as traffic police, there are a lot of agencies that come to play to ensure that we have enhanced enforcement and stringent enforcement. And therefore, when you look at traffic police as in Ghana, if you want to do further analysis, you must go back and look at how it has evolved and how far we have come. That not long in 1952, Prior to independence, traffic police unit was 
established because at that time our forebears brought on stream the first road traffic ordinance number 55 and so enforcement came in since though the law has been amended the last time i got amended was in 2004 and gave us this in terms of enforcement efforts you haven't seen much amendments in terms of traffic policing because in the act that amended the 1952 one the vision of ghana is for example to ensure that police effort is strengthened i.e you look at section 118 to ensure that traffic police is automated for example why because within the u.n system all member countries have shifted from institute traffic enforcement which has to do with get traffic police officers or police personnel train them equip them clothe them and let them deploy them to stand at strategic look duty points use the eye and interact that hasn't worked so our forebears in 2004 said we should move away from that. So we go to section 118. They have given us the way to ensure that we inject automation into traffic policing in Ghana. Something else I said, how far have we gone? I posted that moving forward, that concept, that strategy, we have to perceive it with all our might to get it done. Because countries that have done it, there is high deterrence. There is high sense of detection. And therefore, though they have many vehicles on our road, on the roads, because the roads are not left free, but there are sensors that detect. And motorists are aware. Some may be recalcitrant as what, well, but because these things are there, they refrain from committing. And in such instances, incidents of crashes and preventable death ceases or are minima. Again, when you look at these enforcement efforts of police, one aspect of it, for example, in our lifetime, I'm talking about, that seemed to make even police weak, has to do with removal of, for example, uh, or, or towing service delivery. If you look at the law, it is the responsibility of traffic police to be informed and to deploy capacity to go and quickly remove obstructions mm. that pose danger mm. nocturnally and diurnally. We ask ourselves, what is the capacity of the state in terms of towing vehicle ownership? If it is not present, then of course, policing is using the hand mm. and human effort, okay. which won't work because when transit vehicles that are loaded break down, mm. when prime movers or articulated trucks get broken down <laughs> you cannot use human effort mm. to push okay you need so let, let's 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 do this it. let's do this let me get to dr daniel asensu jambibi and then i take his uh, initial comment then i'll return to you because you've already gone ahead to suggest the solutions Good. you say um automation of traffic policing rather than in situ traffic policing is a way to go so i will get back to you to find out what exactly is this uh, automation of traffic policing what will it take where are we with it and why are we where we are now but um, dr Asensu jambibi from where you sit what's your diagnosis of the reasons we are where we are recording increasing numbers instead of the expected reduction i've been reading an article by nana sefa chum who says that uh, indeed the figures we are talking about are nothing to write home about as they continue to soar each passing year 
then it gives the figures for previous years and so on and shows that the majority of the crashes are blamed on commercial vehicles hello dr sansu jabibi you need to unmute are you okay that's right thank you very much thank you very much samson and good morning to our panelists and good morning ghana yes the status quo has remained the same and for us at the building and road research institute we are not surprised because we host the accident data bank and we've been doing this for the past 20 years we go around the whole country every year and collect road traffic accident data we process them we analyze them and give the reports and results to road safety uh, commission or national road safety authority now as it's been called um, we are not surprised but your question why is this still the status quo it is still the status quo because enforcement is still weak engineering is still weak education is still weak and we haven't developed alternative modes of transportation that would take a lot of the tracks we have on our road to safer places and make our roads safer so in brief what i'll say is that yes the status quo has remained the same because of these lapses the statistics are alarming the causes are outrageous the effects are extremely gloomy and depressing and the cost staggering as engineer Duncan just said it is now a national emergency and this is why i highly commend said Pamuk watching for giving us this documentary which obviously has become the magnifying glass for this nation so that we can all see the gravity of the road traffic accidents and deal with it in a manner that is befitting of an emergency as engineer Duncan said you point to three things weak enforcement weak engineering weak education explain okay when it comes to enforcement um superintendent Obin just said that the manual way of enforcing traffic regulations have not worked has not worked because you are dealing with human uh, human beings who are supposed to enforce the rules and you know the problems we have with policing in this country the influence of figures uh, influential figures all come to water down the enforcement rules or regulations when it comes to road traffic accidents so we need to move away from that and go into technology and when we come there i'll also explain and add my voice to how that these technologies can help uh, ensure that enforcement is effective engineering look at our rules from kumasi to accra accra to cape coast cape coast to takrade to tamale the high mortalities we have on these roads are as a result of head-on collisions on the highway and these are the kind of accidents that claim huge numbers of mortality why because they are head-on collision can you imagine two vehicles moving at 120 kilometers per hour each moving in opposite direction and coming together in a head-on collision what do we expect it will reduce when we have dual carriages and it is doable because we've been able to do free SHS. we've been able to marshal resources to handle COVID effectively we can do it with determination let me talk about education now look at our uh, transport drivers the trotro drivers how many of them have the basic education to read road signs and to be able to interpret them and give judgment i mean good judgment on the rules so if they cannot read if they cannot even anticipate and project the kind of uh, the speed that the oncoming vehicle is coming and they have to overtake at every instant what do we expect and i added the fourth one which is the alternative mode of transportation mm. if you look at uh, our road sector now all the track that transport goods from Tema across the, the the length of this country to the north they are all on the roads and i'll come to a very important point where we have uh, trucks that are supposed to be not more than 60 tons are overloaded to the extent of 87 tons flying our road they are destroying the road 
so that the roads are not able to last their lifetime. And secondly, they break down on the road and they become a nuisance on the road and they become obstruction to other motorists. So that is the explanation I'm giving to engineering enforcement education and how we have not been able to uh, provide alternative modes of transport that can take away most of the uh, transportation of goods from the ports to the countryside or to the hinterlands mm. from the road. If you have an effective railway system, I'm sure most of our fuel tankers and all these huge trucks we find our road can be transported by rail into Kumasi, Cape Coast, Takrade, um, Tamale, Borga, and we can relieve the road of this heavy traffic that is causing this kind of havoc on our road. All right. So clearly, the engineering aspect, as far as you are concerned, should be top on your list of three. They are all important. Mm -hmm. Enforcement is critical. In fact, in the short term, I believe that enforcement, if you want to deal with this situation and make sure that the figure we had in 2020, that is the 2,580 something, is halved. If you want to do that this year, it has to go first with enforcement because you know engineering is medium term. Mm. Building a dual carriage will not take three months or right. one year. And the second education one, you see the education, we have done the education for as, as uh, long as I was a kid. And I can remember the rules of the education. So, um, something, let me add to, it is not the education as we are doing now. Education of drivers. How many drivers can read and write? You understand? Okay. How many drivers know? In US, they have something they call driver ed. That is driver education. Mm. You first do a visual test, you do alcohol test, you do drug test. All right. Before so, you are you are let onto the road. Mm. Now to, to the road safety authority, I, I I should begin with the number two of the solutions that you know um uh, Supo just uh, mentioned about the towing. Okay. Um, a friend of mine just sent me a message, uh, Douglas Twenty Four, and he says that, and this is some statistic that we have been familiar with, that Africa has two percent of the world's cars, mm -hmm. only two percent of the world's cars, but twenty percent of the road road deaths mm -hmm. is towing or lack of good towing facilities swift uh doing so swiftly the re the reason how much of that is pa is to blame okay i think that uh supo uh well in his preamble uh, mentioned so maybe you should just say alex and alex you'll be cool with that thank alex. you, thank you. <laughs> you know when people have titles hmm. like doctor you just said doctor hmm. uh what what, what you, so <laughs> professor engineer yeah police is supo cop and so on let's proceed but let's go okay. well for as long as the phd is not acquired in four months yes. <laughs> it is worth <laughs> giving credit to it. yeah mm. okay that's fine but when it comes to towing i think that the history uh is so clear to all of us when we notice and identified it as one of the critical problems in road safety management in ghana because at the time I think somewhere 2017 and before then we had done our analysis and found that fatal crashes one of them happened as a result of vehicles getting disabled and then they because of the our low capacity or in absence of that they to remove it they drop the vehicle right in the middle of the road, especially on the highways, and others drive into them. Was constituting about 11% of our fatal crashes. That was very huge. And so we came up with a concept. And that concept was well thought through. Having referenced many practices across the world, Africa, Europe, Asia, the Americas, and so on, and came up with a concept. And so with this concept, let us try it. We managed to incorporate into our, our laws and regulations 
and we're just about to take off when we said all motorists you go to dvla to register your vehicle or for roadworthiness add a small amount of money five cities ten cities 15 cities there about depending on the capacity of your vehicle annually annually we put the money together then when a vehicle gets disabled we can mobilize the capacity from somewhere especially from the private sector to remove and get the road clear for all of us and you know what happened i wouldn't repeat it here the whole ghana say no okay now we were unable at that time we were then a commission to promote it and we got everybody telling us to stop and so we stopped now we thought that as we stopped somebody will come with an alternative as we speak there is no alternative nobody came with any suggested ideas mm -hmm. and the problem is still there and just recently on monday or so we all woke up in the morning and right in front of us here tesano in the city not on a highway in the city a bus with passengers drove into a disabled vehicles now people even ask questions as to the presence of the Tesano police station which was very close but the issue is that if we were even unable to lift it or protect that particular incident at Tesano in Accra what about Praso or somewhere in the interlands when it happens it means that the capacity is not there now we haven't slept over it national road safety authority in particular we're discussing with the police and discussing with the ministry that we must do something by all means in any case this week i think the issue has come up into the media discussing if we are going back to they call it sankofa going back to the old concept and bring it back but that is not the issue for now about levies and payment what we want is the service somebody must be able to have the capacity to remove disabled vehicles otherwise you know what is coming now niger burkina faso togo mali and all these countries are now loading or coming to our harbors tema and takradi and loading their stuff across our highways to their various countries most of their vehicles are not roadworthy i can see and they load so high that they get into the middle of the road and they break down how do we remove these vehicles so that we don't drive into move on to the Accra Kumasi highway and see if you don't find numbers i am sure 10 15 20 vehicles find them in positions that are so crucial that if you don't remove them in an hour or two it will result in a crash and death it has come to a situation that we must act on yes so what is our solution our solution is that mm -hmm. we have four options to select from mm -hmm. That's why I said today we're talking about solutions. Right. One is this very one which we brought up, the levy system mm -hmm. that people kick against. Yes. It's one. It's still an option. Mm. The second you is think it's still, that it's is still, still an it's option. It's still an option. In that same in old that law. In that same old law. Right. Because the law has not been repealed or amended. Mm. So it's still there. Until Parliament amends it, that is what is the law now. So it's still there. Now, the second one is for insurance to pick it up. So when you go and register with any insurance, the insurance will add a small fee and say, whenever you get into such a situation, call me and I will do it for you. That is two. Three, we can also decide that mandatorily, you go and subscribe to a towing service company already set up and then he will deal with you. If you register with me, these are my conditions. Whenever you break down, I will come and handle it for you. That is there. Mm. And the last one is perhaps government would want to vote money and invest and buy the trucks for the police to, to, to do it or for the National Road Safety Authority to do it. But I can tell you, my good friends, globally, it's a private sector-led venture. But the only one of them that makes economic sense or business sense is the one that monies are guaranteed there is flow of funds available to do it because it's a capital intensive project you see some people don't understand how you know leaders and people in position uh, like you are resolving some of the problems and and too often 
they seem to see your solution to be a procurement so uh, a procurement way okay um why should it be so and they're asking questions people are asking questions that now you're beginning to bring back what there was an overwhelming you know protestation against and the government shelved um why must it always be the case that people should pay more before they get a particular service when they're already paying a lot they you have these tolls you have all sorts of fees that people are paying uh on the roads is that not so yes for uh, fuel and the rest of them yeah so I, I think that this is where it comes to dialogue you know when it came to this galamse thing you know they have called a public forum to discuss right so we would still need to discuss mm. because the first concept that came up people came with suggestions some people were even thinking that government should take it up pay for us after all there are so many ventures that government had made it free one this, one that. One this, one that. People think that government should be able to do it. Well, but that is in their opinion. But if it's so required that because we are paying rotos, we are paying taxes and so on, the government or the day would have to decide as a priority to vote money into it and do it. After all, how much, government was able how, to okay. bring in uh, ambulances, about 307 yeah. ambulances, mm -hmm. and spread them across the country to beef up what is already existing that's right helping the post crash mm. uh, incident right which is fantastic right so if we think that towing or removal of disabled vehicles is also an, a priority for government then we should also take an action but your your solution is that it should be private sector led and what most Ghanaians were angry about was that this uh, this law appeared to have been passed just to enrich one single private entity so the suggestions were made that we already have a system so why don't you decentralize it properly uh, you can get these vehicles for the assemblies and they are closer why do you want a private person to pocket that money when the state can equally do it it's already doing it to a certain amount i i think that it's very unfortunate i must say perhaps we were unable to communicate to the understanding of the, uh, of the ordinary man. I don't think that we had any intention to prepare a project for an individual. No, government cannot do that. Perhaps maybe interpretation of the law. But the whole thing was that Ghana must put in place a certain mechanism to do the job. Mm. Now, it was all based on capacity. Anyone who had that capacity, come forward and let's do it. If you come and say, I have 20 trucks, and this is how I want to operate. So be it. But you cannot have nothing and come and make any pronouncements or pledge that I would. How do you do it? Mm. Come with capacity. So if an individual. And the fact you had a number of uh, private sector parti uh, participants, but in the end, they wanted the government to still give them the money to be able to deliver the job. Exactly. So, Unlike Zoom Lion, that appeared to have the capacity to. So the question is. Are we saying that it's, it's either the chicken before the egg or egg before the chicken? Mm. The capacity is this. All right. I have the capacity. Mm. I want to do it. Or let us build that capacity by giving people money to go and then procure the resources and do it. It's up to us. Yes. That is why it is always But, but you also believe that the, the state yes. owning this and doing it through a decentralized agencies across the country there's no entity that has capacity than the state okay so the state is everywhere yes. and no one single company can claim to be better spread and has a financial muscle to do it better than the state so do you still agree that that's a viable option Who is and, and my very final question to you before i come to alex is how much of the carnage will this reduce you know, I, in my introductory, I said that mm -hmm. at the time that we were preparing this whole package, mm. the contribution from uh, disabled vehicles, mm. fatal crashes, was mm. about 11%. Okay. In some years, it would go as far as 21%. So we're hovering around between 10 to 21%. In some years, depending on the situation, you could have 10%, 11%, 12%. And there was a particular year that was about 21%. But averagely, I put it, even if it is 12% or 11%, mm. it's huge. Because what happened at Tesano 
was a clear case and three persons lost their lives okay. three persons mm. mothers of certain children fathers and so on so if you think about the repercussions mm. it is huge I, I but I, I think that uh, currently we are discussing the various options people made contributions and at the time that we wanted to roll on and it was no they came with some kind of ideas especially in relation to procurement we had already consulted the insurance insurance was not ready at the time we had also consulted the assemblies assemblies were not ready at the time because assemblies were already into parking uh, i think car parks and wrongful parking and so on but this was a huge investment but i can assure you if government should give the way and say that we are leading we are ready to invest in it we bring money and resource the assemblies and the police to do it i think so be rich so at the moment nothing is being done because the population fought against the towing uh, law and levy i think that is the case that's the case now just that we are discussing with the ministry very soon in reviewing the li a portion how, will come how is that pardonable that because you in intend to introduce one channel as a solution and it's been fought against by the people we go to sleep um we have not slept but we are operating a system that is like a, a, a cash and carry system if your car breaks down you would arrange for it to be removed but it takes you more money because one remover costs you not less than three thousand Ghana cities and that is what is currently going on i see and and, and so if if we think that is what must go then the, the, what we are telling ourselves is that when it happens to you, you should go and look for... So what have you done to rethink the solution? What have you done with all the ideas that were shared? I think we have... As the up, alternative to we, the law. We have put up a propose, proposal mm -hmm. uh, that has looked at various options. The one that government can do, one that insurance can do, or the one that for all of us can do with DVLA and the police. Or the private sector can do uh, very soon the ministry of transport will pass it on to parliament for discussion and that is the way it must go okay we must open up and let Ghanaians decide so, which of this so the proposal is going to end up in a law yes okay yes and this is not the old law no, this is not the old law it's not the law it's not the law that is existing now okay which may not be some repealed, amendment which yes. which not been repealed that has been suspended exactly okay right so alex you were talking about and what i understand should be your biggest concern is that going there and standing there to do traffic and watch you know and uh, hold the uh, offenders responsible is not working that's what you're saying and therefore we should have automation of traffic policing what is that what will it take where are we with it or it's just been an idea for how long now all right i think uh, i'll make reference to what uh, you and i've said and i'm quoting profusely from saving lives beyond 2020 the next steps and these were the recommendations that were brought up by the academic expert group during the third global road safety conference and they have recommended safe system approach to all road safety managers around the world, including countries. And I'm happy that the benefit that the world got on the first decade, from 2011 to 2020, Ghana also benefited. And I believe that's why we are here, bringing road safety to the front banner by civil society, very large extent. Because it says that governments are sleeping around the world. So one, the safe system approach, which is vision zero, which also recognizes that human beings are frail. And therefore, we must get a system premised on five principles. And one of them, which is critical for a discussion, is this that road safety, it adheres to this underlying principle that safety should not be compromised for the sake of other factors such as cost. Road safety should not be compromised for the other. For example, the other I had 
Oh, if you want to dualize, it will take ages. It's expensive. Say, no. You do that, you have a problem. But when it comes to uh, our capacity, you know, I've said that. You look at traffic police in Ghana, the way we started in 1952, that's how we have been to now. And I think it is not working because the world, because of advancement, first in road design and economic development, mm. that has engendered individuals, citizens, buying more vehicles than we used to have. And the nature of vehicle designs, speed, and other features that come with it. You don't have, you don't, it is to speak to you clearly that the traffic police officer that was envisaged in 2052 should not be left with the same methods. And therefore, the same document recommends that we should ensure that traffic police everywhere in the UN system, member country, is equipped. And I'm happy that Ghana has incorporated it in our law, Section 118, and went back to Regulation uh, 157 mm -hmm. of Act 63 and LR 2280, respectively. However, when it comes to groundwork, not much has been done. And that's why you see traffic police officers always training, deploying them, hoping that uh, there will be minimal interference, uh, there will be uh, minimal threats. Uh, there will be minor, minimal incidents of uh, bribery, corruption, and all that, mm. which uh, is not helping much. And, and that is why currently, traffic police department under the ministry is trying to procure what our forebears envisioned. Do you have an automated traffic police system? And so far, we we have advanced we hope in a matter of months because i recall what the minister of transport said during the easter campaign uh, on the n6 corridor particularly at bunso and the, uh, susutem and then Nkoko, that very soon the traffic police is coming with a tomato system that or deploy cameras these are traffic cameras that will detect in traffic violations that leads to crashes because it's not going to only de going to deploy only unattended cameras but some will be in vehicle mm. and so we spot you we look for you give you a, give you a ticket is we, that it the issue is not even looking for you in terms of physical, you know, but electronically, because the vehicle owner's data is sitting at the DVLA automated vehicle register. Mm. Uh, your information on license uh, insurance is sitting on motor insurance. You believe the minister who says very soon, and you don't even have a pilot around the place. What I'm saying that uh, we, we don't we piloting and all that has been done. What is this that we are procuring? Because if there's no pilot, you don't go and procure a system, isn't it? Mm. All these things have been done over the years. What is this? Is the procurement. And so far, government have gone far. We expect. How do you say over the years? Because as far as we know, the contract was given to this uh, one, is it everywhere, Beijing everywhere, China people, and then there was an abrogation of it or something, and they have uh, sued oh, the country. Surveillance. And that, that's only for surveillance. Yes, yeah, And then give it to no, another. Okay. Yeah, no traffic. That's only for surveillance. Yeah, okay. And that is how far we have gone under Act 118. Okay. Our five. So, you know what I'm saying? That uh, we've gone very far, and very soon mm. a first electronic ticket will be deployed. Really? To an offender. And that, to a very large extent, will ensure that an offender will be forthcoming from the comfort of his home, <laughs> Bami mm. as it pertains to other uh, jurisdictions. And okay. we expect mm. that it will complement and reinforce our effort. Because if you have such a deployed facility, technology, what is 
It communicates. Did you, did you say you are only, you are trusting the word of the roads minister or the transport minister? Uh, just that, or that you have the facts that suggest that the very soon you are talking about is not the political very soon we are familiar no, with. No, no, no. The very soon that takes us a decade. The department, the MMTTD is the implementing agency, mm. and I'm saying that I'm uh, just quoting him that he made mention of it. And I'm telling you how far we have gone. Mm. That we very soon, all these. Well, very soon, for example, is like. Oh, you, I, I, next I, month. Let's look around. The, you know, the next three months or thereabout. Mm. We expect uh, something positive. Go where we have reached. Uh, the Ministry of Finance. We've gone far. Mm. What is important is that uh, we expect because the in tension is all right is where the solution lies all right there's a solution okay. program so thank you so that, very much uh yeah there will be mm. a deterrence okay we, that we clearly see, will help you commit. that clearly will help you a lot um let me take my very final uh uh, comments from uh, Dr. Asensu Bibi, who is uh, on the line. Uh, I'll read some other solutions suggested by other members of the public who are watching. Even let me start with this from Dr. Maxwell Oseyam Pofu, emergency physician and deputy CEO of National Ambulance Service. He says, in addition to the road engineering, education and enforcement and other human factors, another important link is the post-crash response because despite our best efforts at prevention unfortunately there may be some road traffic crashes and a system for a post-crash response will determine whether the victim loses the life or limb suffers a permanent disability or recovers fully or with some minimal disability one extract extrication Injuries are aggravated with poor extrication. Two, pre-hospital emergency response. Both ground emergency medical services and helicopter emergency medical services. Three, dedicated trauma centers where the injured can be sent to at the moment there is delay in the care of the injured because of competition for bed space with other chronic illnesses leading to poor outcomes. Finally, trauma centers linked to rehabilit rehabilitation centers. So there should be an integrated approach to this challenge to get the best of outcomes. Yes, uh, let's have you uh, end with us briefly. Uh, uh, Just, uh, okay, good. yes, you are, you are on now. Yes, yes. Um, as it was um, proposed by the doctor, mm -hmm. I think an integrated approach is the way to go. All right. And that is why we are proposing the solution under four main heading. Or let's put what, the, what is coming from the medical experts added to it to become five main proposal points. And the first point has been elucidated by the uh, superintendent of being enforcement. Towing, we cannot run away from it. He has also talked about the, uh, the technology and he's trying to describe the demerit points on licensing of people who uh, uh, violate road traffic regulations. He has talked about how we have to make sure that people who disobey traffic regulations are sent tickets. Right. But to be able to do that, we need the automatic number plate recognition. That is very important. We have talked about the, the engineering. We cannot run away from constructing dual carriages. If it takes um, five years to dualize Kumasi Accra Road, it's good for us, 250 kilometers. Hmm. If we can say every year we are going to dualize 50 kilometers of Kumasi Accra Road, by five years, one term of a president, we will have a dual carriage from Kumasi to Accra. And sustainably, we will be able to do that. We are a middle income country now. Moving forward, we cannot drive on single carriage ways. So we have to do that. Education, a comprehensive approach at the BEC level, at the secondary school level, the SSS to the SHS students come out of school and immediately they begin to drive. What is their knowledge in road safety? How are they protecting other road users? It should be embedded in our curriculum at the BEC level and at the SHS level so that they will appreciate why you don't have to drink and drive. Why you don't have to take drugs and drive? The impact of drunk driving on the uh, uh, motorist. 
an alternative mode of transport. Very key. Right. If I can stay at the swamp and move to my office in Accra in say 10 minutes by rail, why would I be driving on the road and exposing myself to this stress? Mm. And if you combine this integrated approach, we will reduce the road traffic accident to a very large extent. All right. That's our Thank you so very much. And it's so sad. Uh, just recently, we had to talk about uh, illicit uh, gold uh, deals that has robbed this country of millions of dollars, which uh, we estimated will be able to dualize uh, such a large part of this country. So those who are stealing the monies from us are also doing as such... Um, Meda. Thank you so very much. We've just begun this uh, crusade and we hope that we will sustain the momentum and ensure that, you know, the duty bearers will help us to get the right answers. My guests have been Superintendent Alexander Kweku Obing. He is Director Education Research and Training MTTD. Uh, he walks the law like nobody's business. If you are talking to him on the road traffic laws, uh, it's inbuilt in him. It's like speaking to uh, Yao Jan about land law. Engineer David Osafua Donting is Director, Planning and Programs, the National Road Safety Authority. Also assuring us that they have a proposal that might uh, hit uh, Parliament soon. Dr. Daniel Asensu Jembibi is Director, Building and Road Research Institutes. They gather the data on road crashes every year for us. Thank you, gentlemen, so very much. So we take a quick break. We return. I'll share some of your messages on what you think are the solutions. And the duty bearers will be listening. They will take notes. We will be joined by uh, uh, Samuel Abujina Paul, the Min Lands Minister and a couple others to help us look at the renewed Galamse fight. What's new about it? And remember that at the time that there was a ban <clears throat> on Galamse, there was a record that small-scale mining had taken so much gold to the world and sold. How did that happen? It was banned. We'll be right back. <laughs>